extract from an article entitled Traditions, Folklore and Old Wives' Tales. I remember uh, collecting and selling holly and mistletoe for a few pennies at Christmas time and the New Year, and there were many other local traditions associated with this time of year. We still have carol singers today, of course, but for those of us children from poor families back in the 1940s, carol singing was a serious source of income and at least we knew all of the verses and sang several carols before knocking on the door with the expression, Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you haven't got a halfpenny, God bless you. I also learned a trick from one of my friends that if somebody came to the door and said they didn't have any change, you would ask them if they had any empty pop bottles. That way you could take them back to the local shop and collect the deposit on them, usually a few pence. We would often find ourselves loaded up with bottles and jars and having to convince the local shopkeeper that we had not stolen them from his customers. We also went out very early on Christmas morning wishing people a Merry Christmas and receiving small amounts of cash from the grateful recipients. At home, our Christmas traditions included having a chicken for Christmas lunch. This would be a big treat as you probably would only have chicken at Christmas and Easter. And it was rare to have any big toys, but you could not wait to find out what was in the stocking you would find at the foot of your bed. The stocking would be a real one, as previously worn by my mother. You could not see through the mesh, so you built up the anticipation by trying to guess what the objects in the stocking were by feeling the shapes. Most of the items would be sweets and small toys, and in the toe of the stocking, you would usually find some money and an orange, another rare treat for the early 1940s. The orange would be wrapped in a small square of tissue paper and you could unwrap the paper, twist the corners into legs, then put the tissue back on the orange and push it across the floor so it looked like some giant bug. Well, I did say we didn't have many toys, didn't I? Finally, the tissue paper would be consigned to the toilet paper nail in the outside toilet and appreciate it as a welcome relief from the usual squares of torn newspaper. At New Year, the rounds would be done again, just after midnight, only this time the tradition required the darker the greeter, the more luck it would bring. Some children blackened their faces for this occasion, but it was also acceptable for the greeter to be carrying a lump of coal, my preferred method. When visiting some houses, if you were the first greeter, you were required to either step inside the house, first footing, or walk through the house and out through a different door than the one you came in.